When the temperature is at its lowest, it's when the fun is at its highest. But then it's carnival time. Fun to dress up and act out a part. Life is enjoyed to the full. And nowhere else is carnival celebrated as intensely or stylishly as in Venice. It's in the winter months when Venice is particularly fascinating for its visitors. In a tranquil way, the magnificent facades of the buildings on the Grand Canal can be admired. And when Venice eventually disappears in the mist, there is a kind of melancholy. Not a melancholy of despair, rather one that is sweet and inviting. Shrouded in mist and populated by masked forms, it is now that Venice becomes irresistibly romantic. As the Austrian novelist Franz Grillparzer once wrote about St. Mark's Square, whoever does not hear their heart beat here has none. The power of history invades the senses and the view cuts across the canal to Judecca. In a special way, the carnival masks blend perfectly with the architecture of the Lagoon City. It's as though one is on a magnificent stage, which has been created by an ingenious set designer. Everything is play, disguise and admiration. As in earlier times, St. Mark's Square is the centre of the carnival. Under the five domes of the Byzantine St. Mark's Cathedral, a colourful spectacle develops when masked forms stroll under the arches and arcades of the grand buildings. Even during carnival time, the pigeons are the secret rulers of Venice. They belong as much to this city as do the gondoliers and the smell of the canals. During carnival, the hours go by seamlessly for those who celebrate. Thus the clock in St. Mark's Square has nothing to chime about. Day and night belongs to the pleasures of the masked. Why the carnival, with its masked, fancy dress, fits so well into the city is quite easy to explain. Because those in fancy dress, as well as Venice itself, appear reserved and mysterious. And at the same time, they love to be admired. The word vanity has no negative meaning here.
to explain. The term carnival is a combination of the words carn and veil, which translated means meat and need. So carnival means the need for meat. Shortly before Easter fasting, the people wanted to indulge themselves in the enjoyment of meat, which was forbidden from Ash Wednesday. Therefore, all social restrictions were lifted for a limited length of time. This pleasure was of the utmost priority. The mask was the ideal opportunity for a new identity. Women became men, the poor became rich, and the old were able to become young again. Masks are closely associated with the history of Venice. They were first mentioned in a law which was passed on the 2nd of May 1268. It ruled that those who wore masks were not allowed to throw eggs. The behaviour of the mask to Venetians was therefore given certain limitations. Too often the anonymity of the masks had been used as an excuse to carry out unsavoury and unlawful acts. After all, who wouldn't like to throw a few eggs? Prohibition of the masks became a necessity, especially as it was difficult to follow anonymous wrongdoers through the labyrinth-like narrow lanes of the Lagoon City. Today, the masked population do not pose a problem for the authorities. They show themselves in public, usually in one of the cafes around St. Mark's Square. In the most famous, the Café Floriani, opened in 1720, Goethe took his coffee. And even today, this coffee house, with its rather inflated prices, is a favourite meeting place for both established and budding artists. Here one seeks out inspiration, revitalizes creativity or, as anyone in a romantic city must always do, flirts.
For those without a mask, it's easy to find one. Numerous mask shops offer a variety of styles, or they can be hired. Caution though, a mask can cost as much as a fine new pair of Italian shoes. Whether masked or not, there is possibly no better way of enjoying a city tour than in a romantic gondola. They glide through the bending narrow alleyways and over the majestic Grand Canal. And if there's a desire for melancholy, then one can look across to the island of the dead San Michele, where Stravinsky is buried. old palaces with magnificent facades and even more magnificent interiors. The days when Venice was still a world power, as well as those times when it suffered economic decline. Only one thing remains unchanged. Venice without masks is unthinkable. The masks often caused problems in Venice. In 1339, people with masks were forbidden to roam the city at night. And in 1458, the authorities had to go further. After several deplorable incidents, men dressed as women were banned from sneaking into convents. Wild times. The predominant mask to this day is that of the beak mask. But it wasn't a bird that was used as its model, it was the guise of the Venetian plague doctors who used it to protect themselves from infection. The costumes which reflect the influences of the Renaissance and the Baroque eras are those which best integrate with the architecture of the city. Still today, Venice is representative of these epochs. The city was formerly not only a tourist metropolis, but also the centre of power. In the cold season, Venice is shrouded and hidden in mist, just like the masks hide those who wear them. Few miss the sun of the summer months with its oppressive heat, which intensifies the smell of the canals. And the grey sky 
is an ideal ally of the masked, because in front of this background, the brilliance of all the colorful shining costumes come to life. That masks are synonymous with seduction is plain to see. It is not by accident that Venice was the home of Casanova. Whether they agree to it or not, the pigeons in St. Mark's Square have a lot of competition during the frenzy of carnival time, especially when it comes to seeking attention. Today, those who actually take part in the carnival are seldom the Venetians themselves. Instead, participants arrive from many corners of the world and immediately throw themselves into the chaos of the celebrations. Throughout the decades, one question always remains. Who or what is hidden behind the mask? The game of disguise and seduction is universally fascinating. Nowadays, as one strolls through Venice and observes the profusion of masks among the buildings, it is hard to imagine there was no carnival in this, the most beautiful city in the world, for about 200 years. This was because at the end of the Glorious Republic, the carnival was abolished by the French Emperor Napoleon. It was only in 1979 that hoteliers and tour operators got together and stirred Venice from its winter hibernation. Even for the masks, there was no redemption during the carnival-free years. The authorities repeatedly warned that criminals and political no-gooders would exploit the use of disguise for their own ends. When Venice was part of the Austrian Empire, the Viennese government prohibited the wearing of masks. The only exceptions made were for private functions or VIP parties, such as grand balls at the opera house La Fenice.
The hustle and bustle of daytime celebration is quite restrained compared to that of night. When dusk approaches and signals the start of the evening's activities, there is a feeling of tension in the air. One can sense the imminent festivities or, in complete contrast, a feeling of melancholy. And particularly when Venice has slipped on the costume of the mists and when the gondolas are in mourning. the Carnival of Venice is celebrated at numerous parties. Here, joie de vivre explodes and is absorbed into the masked hustle and bustle. The order of the day is to make the most of each second and throw everything into the game. The masks confuse and instigate a chase. Festivities transform the Venetian carnival into a time machine. One is transported to another epoch. Into earlier, not necessarily better, but certainly more exciting times. And it's easy to understand how Casanovas are synonymous with this city. Carnival in Venice, a unique catwalk on which vanity can be unashamedly displayed, where just a simple cardboard mask isn't good enough and where the inspiration for dressing up, disguise and enchantment is essential. Here everyone is a performer looking for the admiration of the crowd, permitted to appear between romantic walls and in magnificent celebrations. At carnival time, only a lack of imagination is forbidden. As the hours tick away, reality turns to fantasy until, in the early hours of the morning, exhausted, one falls into bed. You can dismiss the Carnival of Venice as a superficial tourist attraction, but this would be to ignore how inspired tradition, melancholy and happiness are united here. In the Lagoon City of Carnival, any conflict is transformed into a single celebration of life. Each year, the carnival proclaims that Venice lives. This is the city of which Jean Cocteau exclaimed, Here the pigeons walk and the lions fly. <laughs> 